26 minutes past three, BBC Radio Leicester, Saturday afternoon. I had a couple of emails from people. When I mentioned who was coming on the programme today, a couple of emails, including Simon in Glenfield, um, uh, particularly wanted to say uh, well done for the Panto last year to my next guests. I know them as Matt and Tash. You know them as Matthew Pomeroy and Natasha Lamb. You may also, if you don't know their names, remember their uh, viral video of the proposal during the Panto run last year. Like Kieran, who we spoke to earlier, and like so many other people in the industry at the moment, they're in lockdown. Down, and I'm pleased to say they're joining us on the show today. How are you guys? Oh, well, thank you. Good, How thank are you? you. Um, are you driving each other mad, by the way? Because, of course, you're in lockdown together, aren't you? <laughs> we are definitely in lockdown together. We've kind of got our own little schedules. We seclude each other. So Tash goes and does her work, and I do some writing. So we've kind of got it down now where we meet in the evening for dinner, but before that, we're doing our own bits and bobs. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, we spoke on the programme. You came in after the Panto run had finished, and we had a chat then, um, because you, you had sort of very similar starts in the business together. You know, Matt um, doing all sorts of other things uh, apart from magic, and, and Tash, you as well. How did you, I don't think I remember how you first met each other. So uh, we was doing a show, or I was doing a touring show, and I'm not sure how much I can tell you on here, but I walked backstage and Tash was in the middle of a costume change. And I realised at that point that I was in trouble. And we went for a little drink after and the rest is kind of history. So Tash was doing her own show, dancing. I was doing my show and we kind of interlapped backstage. And I just caught Tash mid-costume change. Right. <laughs> Did you slap him around the face, Tash? Uh, I just gave him, you know, that kind of look. Yeah, that kind of look. <laughs> uh, now, the other thing I, we didn't mention last time you were here, Tash, but you've actually done some uh, BBC radio presentation up north, haven't you? I have in Cumbria, yes. It was great fun. I did that whilst I was at university and then a little bit after uni as well. So when did the um, sort of career together, working together, when did that sort of kick in? Well, I was obviously doing my own show first anyway, so I did a big illusion show. And I was touring around all over the country and doing some abroad around Europe and a few shows in America. And Tash is a dancer and singer anyway. And because we were together, it kind of naturally fit. It made sense that Tash is incredible on stage on her own. And she brings so much to the show. Having us knitted together as a unit, I feel like not only makes us more unique, but it amplified and evolved the show countless times yeah and it's been about three years now hasn't it Matthew about three years and about 300 shows each year so we we've got the stage time down I think yeah I think anybody who's seen you knows it absolutely works but Tash the first time you worked together how, yes. nerv how nervous were you because you know he, he levitates you he cuts you in half he does all sorts of things to you you've got to have a lot of trust <laughs> yeah, you've got to have a lot of trust, especially with magic for me. Uh, it was more of the tricks going wrong. So I have faith and I have trust in Matthew. But at, at the very beginning, I didn't have as much trust in the magic. So that was the most scariest part for me. Uh, we had Marvin Berglas on the program last week and uh, he said to say hi to both of you. Um, I know that you oh, know, hello. it's such a great um, sort of family, the magic circle, isn't it really? Yeah, I think so. We're surrounded by talent and it's a lovely place and space to draw inspiration from. And all you've got to do is look at the magic scene in this country and sort of further across the seas. And we're blessed to be gifted with such great thinkers who every day mm -hmm. add new routines and effects to the magic world. Such creative people. And yeah. as for Marvin, his dad is, in my opinion, the greatest magician who's ever lived. So... I mean, Marvin's incredible, but David Berglas, his father, is, well, the best. Legend. Yeah. So, who inspired you, Matt, first of all, um, to take up magic in the first place? So, I used to go to Butlins all the time as a kid, and it was my dream job to be a red coat, and I used to watch all of the shows, and I always had this sort of draw to magic. Every time an illusion was wheeled out or a trick happened, I just... I was lost in that space and that moment. And my grandma did a few card tricks. And ever since then, I knew that the way to connect to an audience for me was to get them to be lost in my story. So that sort of built this back catalogue of tricks and effects that I wanted to use. And then from that point, I did it in every show that I could, every place that I could perform in, and hopefully got better and better to a point where we're at now. 
Well, I have to say, Tash, he, he never really stops either, does he? I don't know where he gets his energy from, but you'll remember... <laughs> You'll remember last year during our very short rehearsal period, because we don't get a lot, a lot of time, we were rehearsing in the rehearsal room at Curve and yes. they were showing lots of groups of students around. And every yeah. time a group of students came in, we just had to stop rehearsals because he would get his <laughs> pack of cards out and do tricks. Does he do that everywhere? Everywhere, yes. If Matthew Pomeroy has a pack of playing cards in his hand, you will not be able to stop him from performing magic. It's just the best icebreaker. It's such a lovely, <laughs> the lovely thing to get people to just get lost. Just for a minute, they transition to a different place. The worries of everyday normality vanish, and they just suspend their disbelief with me for a minute or ten minutes. And to have that, I feel, is a gift and something that I'm blessed and privileged to share. So whenever I can, I'm always more than happy to. And we all enjoy it, too. Oh, yeah, Hopefully. absolutely. Um, <laughs> The opportunities to work with so many amazing people in this country, the likes of Anton Deck and uh, people like that, uh, uh, Justin yeah. Fletcher yeah. from CBeebies, but also uh, Daniel Radcliffe, Lady Gaga, um, David Beckham. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and we're very blessed and we're very honoured and we're very lucky. But I'm not just saying this because you're talking to us now, but there's certain people that resonate and there's people that help you and <laughs> guide you. And I think you get to a point in a stage where you kind of feel like you're on the right path and you're doing the right things. And then you meet somebody who you can talk to and they'll steer you in a better direction. And for us, you were definitely that person. And having you backstage was not only lovely and a pleasure, but you gave me advice that will stick with me and stay with me forever. So celebrities are great, but people like yourself who are naturally yeah. gifted performers, to me, mean far more. Oh, you're making me blush now. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't realise either um, that we share a love from our formative years, Matt, because I was a big Gilbert and Sullivan fan as a kid oh, growing uh, up, and, and so oh, were you yes. by all accounts. Well, that's where it all started for me. A guy called Fenton Gray, who was the who played Coco in the Mikado, the Gilbert and Sullivan production that was on telly in 1992. My dad was in an amateur production, then he became professional, and me sitting down in front of the telly, I honestly watched the Mikado <laughs> to the point where the video didn't work anymore. And that led to Parts of Penzance, HMS Pinafore. Like, it just, Gilbert and Sullivan to me is the core and the foundation and the building blocks of everything that I've ever done in this industry. I love it. I, lo I did uh, Parts of Penzance about 300 years ago and I can still tell, I, wow. I could sing every song now. I love it so much. And, and, and Tash, the with, best. Tash, with you, you've done a lot of stuff away from the magic as well. You're not just as a performer, but as a choreographer as well, haven't you? Yeah, of course, and I've directed pantos for schools, um, I've done a lot of singing, uh, yoga, exercise classes, I've got a range of things <laughs> that I've done. Yeah, we spoke last because you'd started a, a YouTube series of videos learning sign language. How did that go and how is it going? It went really, really well. So much positive feedback um, and so many people interested in the classes too. Uh, we're still going with that. We don't want to give out too much information, but we have some more classes coming up There's soon. Some secret projects on some the way. secret projects. Oh. And we've also got magic on there, teaching magic. And we've got a bacon week coming up really soon too. So I get to eat lots of cakes, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> Yeah, not that you've never done that before. Um, <laughs> I mentioned at the very beginning, I had a couple of emails. Um, one was from Barbara, who said she thoroughly enjoyed your performance in the Panto. Uh, the Thanks, other Bob. one, Simon Wright in Glenfield said, please say hello to them from me. What great roles they played in Aladdin. And he says, oh. how can I get information about them? Perfect. Oh. So if you just search my name, so it's matthewpomeroy.com, that's our website, or.co.uk, you'll be redirected. Um, so just matthewpomeroy.co.uk. We're all over YouTube. So you can find us easily. We're sort of readily available. Um, but just in terms of Panto, we were so blessed and so privileged and so honoured. I got to fly on a magic carpet every day <laughs> and marry Tash before marrying Tash with an incredible <laughs> cast. So, to everybody that came to watch it, thank you for your support. It was a party at the end of every single show. It was. And we couldn't have loved it anymore. And just fingers crossed we get to do it again very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. big hello to Simon. And he can catch us on Facebook and Instagram too. Yeah, MatthewPomeroy.co.uk is the official website. You got married then before you actually proposed. But what I need to do <laughs> is I need, I need to just follow up. And I will ask you every time I speak to you. 
Are you right. any closer to naming the day? No, do you know what? I think we would have been if it wasn't for the current situation of the world because we did start to plan in January yeah. and we had notepads full of ideas and the way we wanted to do it and it's kind of been put on hold a little bit just because how things currently are. So I feel like we've got too many ideas as well, Matthew. Yeah, maybe we need a little <laughs> brainstorming session with you, Martin, one day because there's too much going on. We want all of the different kinds of weddings in every single location. Yeah, I mean, there's castles and horses and helicopters and all <laughs> kinds of craziness. Blimey, blimey. And you're not going to saw her in half at the reception or anything, are you? No, well. but the, uh, the speeches will be interesting. They're going to be magic-related up to this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I have to say... Fun. I have to say that, you know, as you know, it was my 30th year in Panto and it is one of the highlights. That moment on stage when you proposed is one of the highlights of the whole of that 30 year period. And thankfully, oh, wow. I, I keep watching the video on YouTube. It's still available there now. Goodness only knows how many, how many times it's been viewed. But it's a pleasure yeah. to talk to you. Um, we catch up on a regular basis for the, uh, the we weekly do. Panto the quiz. quiz yeah, I mean, we can't get anywhere near you, Martin. I mean, you did very well. I'm not sure where you're doing all this research and how you're learning all these answers, but you are, you're the top of the quiz leaderboard without any shadow of a doubt. Quiz no, king. Quiz I have, king. I have to say, um, and I did point it out to you on the quiz last night, that I am about 30 years older than you, and when you have uh, questions about the 80s and so on, that certainly helps. Listen, guys, yeah, pleasure to talk true. to you. Take care. Um, enjoy yourself as much as you can in lockdown, and we hope to see you performing Likewise. again soon. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Bye-bye. Bye. Matthew Pomeroy and Natasha Lamb.